So first of all, from the bottom of my heart, my dear Sasson, I want to thank you for, for being here. Uh, Sasson, for any actors, who is an actor here in the room today? Catherine, you may leave, raise your hand. All of them. Um, you know, exactly. They are all actors in Shakespeare's set. Exactly. And, and Sasson is the hero for a lot, a lot of actors, you know, especially coming from a, um, a Sephardic heritage. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank so, you, thank you. So the first question I, I would like to ask you that I ask to almost every Q&A, regardless who it is, is tell us where you're from. First of all, I would like to ask if uh, my outfit is better than Amos Marazan. <laughs> I must say that it's the first time that I, I the second time that I see this series, and uh, the first time that I see it with the audience, and uh, it, it was amazing to, to hear the, the laughter of the people and the reactions. Uh, I, I think you can learn a lot about the reactions. You usually see TV on your own, and this is, uh, it was a wonderful experience for me. Thank you for being wonderful. <laughs> So the question is, where are you from? Where are you from? What do you mean? Uh, this planet. No, you're from. <laughs> uh, originally, I I, 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 I've been born in Baghdad, Iraq, in Iraq. and I, uh, I arrived to Israel when I was three years old. Uh, I don't remember much of uh, of Iraq and Baghdad, uh, but I, you know, I know the language. Uh, I've been raised uh, with the Arabic, uh, Arabic, uh, Iraqi Arabic, Jewish Iraq, uh, as a matter of fact, the Jewish Arabic. Arabic uh, from childhood. It, it, this was uh, the, my native, uh, my, my native tongue. And uh, afterward, I became uh, Israeli. Uh, I know Hebrew. I study Hebrew, and I knew Hebrew. I think before my parents knew. Uh, I remember that uh, I used to help my mother uh, in uh, her homework in Hebrew. <laughs> No, that, that's actually your answer to another second question that I had, which, do you have any memories of Iraq, but obviously not in the No, I Europe. don't have uh, any memories, only in my imagination, but I had so many stories, and uh, so many uh, from relatives, from my uncles, from my parents. Uh, so, uh, I mean, the memory of uh, the, the story of Baghdad and Iraq is very alive in my, in my uh, imagination, and... Uh, um, lately, I, I have been fortunate to, to meet uh, the people uh, from the Babylonian uh, uh, community in Great Neck. Uh, I've been uh, invited by Albert Nissim, uh, who was sitting here, who, who was also a good friend of my, of my brother. And uh, they invited me to, the, to, to their synagogue. And I all of a sudden f uh, found myself hearing and listening to the, all the prayer uh, as I used to hear in childhood. And uh, it was uh, what uh, things that they haven't done in Israel, you know, in Israel. You do it here. Yeah, you don't oblige. <laughs> you don't feel obliged to, to be uh, uh, traditional and, and uh, religious. But uh, here I'm, I'm, I find myself looking for it, uh, especially with uh, such uh, beautiful uh, people. But you know exactly. You know what the, the, the good thing with this amazing organization, the American Sephardi Federation, and this film festival is that we are very attached to the Iraqi community. So not only we admire you as, as an actor, of course, for all your accomplishments, but you on top of that are honoring the community that we cherish a lot, which is the Iraqi Jews. So this is why I took the liberty to, 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 to ask thank you, you that. Thank you. I was uh, really surprised to, to see how much the Iraqi Jews here are so uh, involved in, in the, the community, in the society. Real estate, Plus, the, the real own, estate. everything. And, and the content, everything. The content. But I, 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 found, I, found, uh, I found the Iraqi Jews here in every field, in culture, and in business, of course. Uh, and I'm really, uh, okay, I'm, I can be proud of uh, my... Uh, yeah, and, uh, and also, we, every year at the film festival, we do a special Iraqi night, so we will send you the movies that we showed last year, and this you remember back then, and a lot of great things. Thank so you. now, after you arrived in Israel, tell me, how did you discover acting? Like, what brought you to become uh, an actor? I know you started with a theater group, Apima Theater, if I'm not mistaken. No, no, I, no I, had, I started, you know, uh, once, once uh, at the school, I was, I think, 10 or 11 years old. We made some sketch on the, uh, the kids. And uh, I, I, was, I, I was a very shy and uh, quiet boy. 
And uh, all of a sudden, I, I made a small part in this children uh, 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 play, and all of a sudden I felt so uh, comfortable, like uh, like a fish in, in the water, and uh, I felt good, and I, I wanted to repeat this feeling again. And then I started to listen to, uh, because I didn't have money to buy tickets to theater, at the time there was plays in the radio, and I used, uh, used to listen to a lot of plays in the radio, and there was a variety of plays, you know, from classic to original plays. Uh, and also it's got advantage that it's, it's forced you to use your imagination. Uh, bit by bit I started to go to theater and I was just fantasizing about being an actor. Uh, I grew up in Haifa and I remember that I, I was fantasizing to be on this stage once. And whenever I come later, after years, I came to perform there, uh, I had this uh, uh, tick in the heart uh, that um, I f fulfilled something that I dreamed. Uh, okay, afterwards I tried to uh, accept to the uh, military entertainment group, but they didn't find me qualified. <laughs> and, uh, but they're very busy, you know. <laughs> yeah, and also I, was, uh, I wasn't sure that I'm uh, talented and I belong to this profession, and I was shy to say that I uh, want to be an actor. Uh, so, okay, after the <coughs> army service, uh, I went to study uh, theater and psychology because I wasn't sure I'm good for theater. <laughs> but uh, really, uh, after a while, I, I found, I got feedbacks and I found myself uh, uh, in the right place. Uh, and since then, uh, the rest is history, as you say. Yeah. And, <laughs> absolutely. And, and one thing that, I, that, that is surprising, and I don't mean surprising in the bad way, is that usually the actors that we saw in Israel, especially at the time when you kind of started, is that they were doing mostly comedies. But you, on the other hand, not only you did that comedy, but you had also a foot in the classical theater. Like you were reading already the big classics, and you told me, you, you, I know you did one of the greatest Cyrano, it is Cyrano de Bergerac, ladies and gentlemen, exactly. And, and, uh, and Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf and many other classics. What, what do you think brought you also, or maybe this is also your signature, at that age, when you started, that you were going from the comedy, the sketches, which we can see a perfect example in Stockholm, but also the classical, which I think give you perhaps some sort of foundation that allows you to give all these colors. What do you think? Look, in, in, in the, if you see in Stockholm, the, the acting is very serious. I, I mean, the, it's, it, we are not uh, cross-eyed towards the comedy. We are trying to be very accurate. And think, I think this is what makes it uh, more valuable, this series. Uh, so it's not just uh, um, um, for love. Uh, so, um, as, as I said in my speech, I, I'm trying to do uh, my work uh, very sincerely uh, and very uh, accurate and devotedly. And, uh, um, so, and I think it's, it's a wonderful, uh, um, it's wonderful to be able to move from classic, from, from drama, from melodrama to uh, comedy, uh, to farce. I think it's a privilege that not many actors have because usually actors either do drama or comedy, and they, then they tag it as, as, as is, as this kind. Uh, but uh, I mean, I, I was lucky enough to be able to move and shift from one, uh, from one genre to other. And also you were creating, because don't forget that in those days, that there was no really a color of the, of the Israeli actor. It was brand new, right? So you were one of the very, I'm not going to say the first, but some of the first generation of, of actors. This is why you have all this beautiful aura around you, right? Uh, if you insist, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, as, a, as a matter of fact, I, was, I wasn't in the first generation because the first generation came from Russia, oh, yeah. Bima Theater, and they were, uh, usually they didn't uh, uh, let uh, uh, actors from uh, Middle Eastern background to, to, to be involved. Exactly. Because if you didn't have a, a, a Russian accent, you wouldn't accept it. Uh, yeah. Uh, so you did Hamlet with a Russian accent and everything. To be or not to be? Yeah. That is yes. the question. Uh, but, uh, uh, so I, I'm, I'm, uh, I think I, I, maybe I'm the middle generation. The, the third generation. But, but you, you brought something very interesting. I didn't plan to talk about it, but 
How was it as an Iraqi Jew? Because I know my father, when he came from Morocco and arrived in Israel, in Israel he didn't have a good reception because other people coming from Sephardi countries, like Arabic countries, you know, they were given to clean the, the, the toilets and all the Russians, they had all the beautiful jobs in, in the office. How was it for you as, a, as an actor? Did you suffer that sort of, uh, I would say? As, as a matter of fact, no. Uh, I think my, my father had a grocery in Haifa and we were, uh, you can say, uh, the, middle, the middle class. Um, uh, we, I mean, we, we got, uh, we received education by our parents and we, uh, we, uh, they insisted that we, are, that we are not feel like the pride and the uh, second best or something like this. We felt, uh, we felt uh, in our heart and in our minds uh, exactly as others and maybe better. So uh, I think it's uh, people from uh, from the Middle East suffer, as you described, yeah. from uh, um, uh, discrimination sometimes, etc. Et but I think it's also got to do with how do you feel uh, in you and what you are doing with that. Yeah. And I always say, behind a great person, you always find some good parents. And that's, I think in your acting, in your choices, we see the beautiful education of Iraqi parents. I'm not Iraqi, but. I'm saying, really beautiful. We'll so my we'll regards to your parents. We'll convert you to your uh, <laughs> So, um, moving on. Um, you are very well known for going to the screen, to the stage. I said, a beloved president, uh, David Ngor. Uh, and you're doing that at almost an equal, I would say, pace. Like, one day a play, the, not one day, but one period for that, one period for that. Do you need both to have, I would say, um, to have a good balance in yourself as an actor? Yes, exactly. I mean, uh, last uh, um, eight months I'm doing the same thing, the same uh, play, uh, and, and I'm not used to it, you know, I'm doing it eight shows a week, you know, we are talking about the Ben's visit. I think the first time in my life that I'm doing for eight months the same play, uh, the same uh, thing, and I really I miss these other things uh, to your question. But I really uh, like to move from, from the stage to the screen. I, I like uh, both uh, media, and I think each one of them got is, its uh, advantages and uh, the, the, the knowledge is to, how, to know how to use uh, every media differently and uh, accordingly. Um, I see myself, first of all, as a, a theater director. Even though I've done a lot of films, uh, I've got my, my kick, and uh, I received my kick from theater. I need this uh, uh, connection with the audience. And also, I like about uh, uh, being on stage is that on stage you are the king of the play. Uh, there is no director, there is no editor. So you are the, uh, the director, and you are the editor. You make the focus on, on, on stage. Uh, I mean, after you rehearsed, etc. Uh, so uh, uh, you are in control and uh, it's in your hands. Uh, you know, uh, if you are doing TV or film, you don't, you know, you do something, you do the scene, it's a cut, and then you don't know what will happen with it. Sometimes even the sound doesn't come out. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. in very rare occasions. Yeah. <laughs> so and and you, you say you, you have the control in your hand and you're sharing that that hand with a lovely. A performer, uh, Katrina Lane, that again I want yes. to acknowledge. Yeah. I would like, uh, I would like to, to, if you allow me, Katrina, to thank you. I mean, I was fortunate to, to work with Katrina for this uh, eight months, uh, and, and um, I mean, it, it's wonderful to be on the same stage with her. Uh, uh, she's uh, the kind of actress that, uh, that I adore and appreciate, and, and I taught her so even before I started working with her. Uh, and now I can say it even more. Thank you. Wow, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. So, uh, moving on. Um, one thing that I, th that I think as an audience member, but also as a, as a professional, that I, that I see really is your signature of Sassoon Gabay is all the accents, right, that he can add, like all the works that he can do on his personality. I don't know if you guys show on, on, saw on uh, Netflix, uh, Stitzel, Stitzel, right? You saw it, right? No. He's on the second season, watch it. It's, Katrina, did you see it? It's unbelievable. You're gonna laugh 
so hard you have no idea. And right from the first scene, it, Sassoon is almost not recognizable, and I had the honor of seeing him a couple of times, and I couldn't even recognize him. He's like an orthodox rabbi, and he's using this, this even the accent that you use him, like a rabbi, I tell you, you know, how do you do that? Like from two feet, an Egyptian accent, from uh, uh, here we saw like you're acting, you're playing another um, character, but I think this is really your signature and I would like to know what you think about that for to, to, to create such really um, a craft, like we say in French, an artisan, you know, like Odette is going to spend uh, days and days to polish the sculpture. I have the feeling you're doing the same thing with your accent and with your character. Uh, first of all, it's a, it's a lot of work and uh, devotion to do it. Um, I mean, for me to, to learn the, Yid the Yiddish uh, language uh, and the right accent, um, it uh, took a lot of work, but um, I, I like very much to, do, uh, to, to play in other language than my own. And when I study, I, I go into it uh, very deeply. Uh, it's it's given me, it me a challenge and, uh, um, and I'm, I'm very uh, interested in doing it, and I'm going to it deeply. Um, so each, uh, when, I, when I have a chance uh, to overcome and, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, break this challenge, uh, it's uh, really a great uh, satisfaction for me. Um, and I hope I will uh, keep doing it. Exactly. Give it up, please, for this beautiful answer while this gentleman sits. Have a seat, my dear sir, have a seat. Have a seat, how are you? Good to see you. So, uh, fast forwarding in your career, in the late 80s, beginning of the 90s, all these big US productions started to call you. Uh, were you at that time in LA? Were you in Israel? No, I was in Israel at the time. Uh, most of the, uh, I've done a few uh, projects in, in uh, American films and British and French, but uh, most of those productions started in Israel and then they continue oh, uh, they in, this in day. Israel, the like Ram, the Ram of Three, for example, which everybody talks about, uh -huh. it started, it shot in Israel mainly. Wow. Then in, uh, Did you guys know that? Then, uh, Amazing, uh, right? Yeah, at yeah. this time uh, it was uh, easy for uh, uh, foreign production to come to Israel, it was safer, and uh, they, would, they had so, pr so much problems with insurance. Uh, uh, unfortunately, during the years, it's become more expensive to, for uh, uh, for uh, foreign uh, production to come. Uh, so, uh, as I said, uh, the project is started in, in Israel usually, and sometimes I, uh, I audition and do, uh, did it in the uh, well, sure. You don't need to audition anymore. But uh, for Rainbow 3, I don't know if you saw him, he was absolutely stunning in it. I was uh, younger for sure. No, <laughs> and, and how was it to work with the uh, slide? Uh, Sly is a very interesting man. He's very, uh, he's, he's knowing his craft uh, amazingly. He, uh, it was, it was uh, almost uh, 25 years ago. So wow. yeah, he was in, at his peak at the time. Uh, it was very interesting for me to, to work with him. Um, he know what he's doing. And, uh, uh, the only problem with, with him was that he was surrounded by many uh, bodyguards at the, at the time. And, uh, um, I mean, if you want to discuss a scene with your partner, it's, it's, uh, you have to go through, through a bodyguard with an Uzi in his hand. So, uh, it's not so simple. Well, let me tell you, after tonight, you're going to have a lot of bodyguards also. Again, because this award is going to bring you a lot of luck. So before, luck. <laughs> exactly. Before we, we start to take one or two questions, in, in a couple of questions in the audience, um, I'd like to move on to our dear friend, Ronnie Telkabetz. Give it up for Ronnie Telkabetz, please. Thank you. So, Ronnie, you did with her three projects? Yeah, yeah I've done three films with Ronnie. Uh, uh, all the three of them, she was, uh, she, she works to the extreme. I mean, she, she do her things and, and uh, to the extreme, and you, she do, she portray a character that you didn't imagine that you are going to see, she also got this cameo, uh, um, yeah. uh, uh, ability to change uh, herself and her attitude. And she was so devoted to her art. I mean, it was wonderful to work with her as a director and get, uh, she was also starred there. And uh, uh, she was, I mean, she's 
artisan was absolute, yeah. and she went to the end. And she was quite a brave, uh, wonderful woman. At the, when, at the time we shot uh, Get, she, she, I think she started to be six, but sick, but uh, she didn't uh, tell anybody about it. And then we went to Cannes and uh, won, uh, won an award, one of the awards, and uh, she was already six there, and the, she didn't uh, say a word. I really uh, I have appreciation for her. I mean, she was uh, uh, larger than life. Yeah. First time I met her, it was in Scar, uh, and we were young, both of us. Uh, we met at a coffee with the director, and, I, and she was, I was so impressed by her, I told myself, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm going to play with this woman, she's, she's larger than life. Uh, but uh, I really, I, I, I'm really grateful uh, to work with her. And uh, Katrina, uh, I think, know, uh, knows her work. And uh, I really appreciate uh, when Katrina said, when she won the Tony, uh, that she thanks uh, Juanita Cabez. I think it's, uh, it's respectful. That, that's what, that, that's what you, you, you call generosity from artists. So I think her directing, I think it must have influenced you and even challenged you as an actor. But also talking about characterization, who has watched The Get? Right, exactly, right, almost everyone, right? And, and talking about characterization, did you see his character that he plays in it? Stunning, right? How, how do you do that? Do you think it's her direction, her, she stimulated you to go to, to, it's to well, that? It's been directed by her and by her brother, Shlomi. Yeah. Shlomi and Kabez. And they always do their project together. So it's, you know, it's a, we rehearse this combination of their ideas, uh, of their uh, uh, guidance, and uh, of your ideas, and what you bring to the, to the screen. Wonderful. So before we, we end the screen, I'm going to take one or, one or two questions. So now you are connecting to run it. We're going to the band's visit. They both star, in case you don't know, in the movie version. Now you are on the stage version. How were you approach to that? to do the band's visit, like, uh, were well, you surprised when Oren, uh, Senator not Oren Wolf, the producer? Well, it's a, uh, I say it in short, it's quite a long story, because uh, uh, Oren approached me, I think, 2010, he came to Tel Aviv because he has an idea to, this, to do this uh, uh, Broadway musical, and I thought he's crazy, <laughs> uh, but when he asked me if I'm ready to do it, I said, of course, I said immediately yes, and it's a wonderful idea, even though I didn't think so. Think so. Uh, the years goes by and I forgot about it and then uh, they made a wonderful production at the Atlantic uh, Theatre and uh, between Atlantic and Broadway they, have, uh, they had a journey uh, to Israel and uh, Oren asked me again, look there is a possibility that Tony Shalhoub, the wonderful Tony Shalhoub, uh, won't be able to, to, to do the whole, uh, the whole run, uh, would you consider coming and I say of course yes. Uh, automatically, but I didn't believe it would happen. Uh, after a few months, uh, it's happened. But you know, uh, I came to something I know. I came to, to a play that I know, I came to a character that I know. Uh, my text is all, we're almost more or less the same as in the film. And also, uh, you know, the best reason haven't left me since I started it, because it was a film that, um, that it was screened many, many times uh, now and then, and it, so it was. I was in it, so it, uh, I never left it uh, uh, in a way. Well, we will never leave you. That I can tell. You.